Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at another 100 card Brawl deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at a blue-black artifact deck featuring Tezzeret the Schemer as our commander, a 4 mana planeswalker that starts out at 5 loyalty, the plus 1 generates an Ethereum cell which is an artifact token very similar to a treasure, the minus 2 gives a creature plus X minus X until end of turn where X is the number of artifacts we control, so nice removal effect, and the minus 7 generates an emblem which says at the beginning of combat on our turn, a target artifact we control becomes an artifact creature with base, power and toughness 5-5 five five, and that's not until end of turn, so it will stay a 5-5 five five creature even if Tezzeret's already dealt with. Then going over the rest of our deck, let's first take a look at all the artifacts we have with Mox Amber at 0 mana, and besides Tezzeret we've got a few additional legendary creatures and planeswalkers that can enable it. We've got Aether Spellbomb, which can bounce a creature or draw a card, Witching Well can scry and can also be sacrificed to draw two. Chromatic Sphere is a cheap cantrip that also fixes our mana. Pacification Array, a cheap artifact to enable some of our synergies, but can also tap down artifacts or creatures. Relic of Progenitus, another artifact we can cycle, but can also be used as Graveyard Hate. And then Renegade Map and Traveler's Amulet can be sacrificed to find a basic land, so those can also fix our mana. And Terrarion, another cheap cantrip that fixes our mana at the same time. At 2 mana we've got some nice Artifact Ramp with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone that can all accelerate us into a turn 3 Tesseret potentially. And then we've got Golden Egg, Guild Globe and Prophetic Prism as 2 mana artifacts that draw a card when they enter the battlefield and then we can still put them to good use afterwards as they will leave a nice artifact in play for us. And then Maze Mind Tome, another nice card draw engine and Mana Sink, same with Treasure Map, that will eventually transform into Treasure Cove, generating even more artifacts in form of treasure tokens. Then at 3 mana we've got Scattering Surveyor as a creature that can find a basic land to fix our mana. Midnight Clock can also ramp adding additional blue mana, eventually will draw us a fresh hand of cards as well. And Icebind Pillar in combination with a few snow lands in the mana base can also be a nice removal spell, tapping down an artifact or creature for just a single snow mana. Then at 4 mana we've got both Firemind Vessel and Hedron Archive that can ramp for 2. Mystic Forge, a nice card draw engine that lets us take a look at the top card of our library and we can cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top of our library and potentially pay 1 life and tap the forge to exile the top card of our library if we don't like what we see. And Solemn Some Lacrim, a creature that enters the battlefield and ramps and when it dies also draws a card. And then topping off our curve, we've got Forsaken Monument, giving colorless creatures we control plus 2 plus 2. Whenever we tap a permanent for colorless mana, we add an additional colorless, so great in combination with our artifact ramp, and we also have some colorless lands in our mana base. And whenever we cast a colorless spell, including artifacts, we also gain 2 life. Then we've got Paradox Engine, great in combination with Mystic Forge, as it will untap all non-land permanents we control whenever we cast a spell, so great in combination with all our artifact mana. And then we also have a Noxious Gearhulk as a 5-4 creature with menace, and when it enters the battlefield we can destroy another creature and gain life equal to its toughness. Bolas the Citadel, a very powerful card draw engine that lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and play lands and cast spells from the top of our library, only paying a life for those spells instead of their mana cost. And then Metalwork Colossus, a 10-10 artifact creature construct that costs X less to cast where X is the total mana value of non-creature artifacts we control, so it can often be played for very cheap, and we can sacrifice two artifacts to return Metalwork Colossus from our graveyard to our hand, so that's another way to put those cheap artifacts to good use. Then taking a look at our non-artifact spells in the deck, at one mana we've got some interaction with Bloodchief's Thirst and Fatal Push, as well as Heartless Act and Doomblade as more removal at two mana, Dark Ritual, excellent to ramp out Tezzeret or some of our other powerful plays ahead of schedule. And then since we're playing blue, we can't really go wrong with Original Counterspell, as well as Renowned Weaponsmith, which taps for double colorless that we can spend on artifacts or activated abilities of artifacts, so excellent in this deck as well. At 3 mana we have Emery, that costs 1 less to cast for each artifact we control, so we can often cast it for single blue. When she enters the battlefield we mill 4 cards, and we can tap Emery, choose an artifact card in our graveyard that we can cast this turn, so we can recycle a lot of our artifacts to generate incremental card advantage. 
Metallic Rebuke can potentially cost a single blue if we can tap two artifacts for Improvise to counter target spell unless its controller pays three generic mana. Sign Master Thopterist generates a 1 1 Thopter whenever we cast an artifact spell, can also sacrifice two artifacts to draw a card. And then both Skilled Animator and Tesseret's Touch can turn one of our artifacts into a 5 5 creature. Thirst for Knowledge can draw three and then discard two unless we discard an artifact card, which is very efficient if we can do so. We're of invention another Improvise card that lets us search our library for an artifact card with mana value X or less and put it straight onto the battlefield, so great for assembling some of our two-card combos like Paradox Engine plus Mystic Forge, or just get a generic powerful artifact like maybe our Bolas Citadel. Then at 4 mana we've got Padim, Console of Innovation, giving artifacts we control hexproof, and at the beginning of our upkeep if we control an artifact with the highest mana value or tied for the highest mana value we get to draw an extra card. Tazara's Gambit, very flavorful in this deck, lets us draw two cards and then proliferate, great for ultimating our Tazaret a turn sooner, and can cast it for three mana and two life if we make use of that Phyrexian mana cost. Then we've got the Antiquities War, which on the first two chapters looks at the top five cards of our library, revealing an artifact card to put into our hand, and on the third and final chapter artifacts we control become artifact creatures with base power and toughness 5-5 five, five until end of turn, so it can potentially set up a massive attack. Then we've got Vidalcan Archmage, which draws a card whenever we cast an artifact spell. Whirler Rogue generates two 1 1 Thopter tokens with flying and can tap two untapped artifacts we control to give a creature unblockable until end of turn, so great for getting in with some of our larger creatures. Extinction Event and Languish as our two sweepers of choice. And Karn Sign of Urza, another powerful planeswalker that can provide Karn advantage with the plus one and minus one and generate a Karn Struct token with the minus two ability. Then at 5 mana we've got some more powerful sorceries with Crux of Fate, either destroying all dragons or non-dragons. Time Warp can take an extra turn, so great with any planeswalkers in play. Then we've got another Tesseret with Artifice Master, which can generate 1-1 Thopter tokens with the plus 1 ability. The 0 ability lets us draw 2 cards if we control 3 artifacts, otherwise just draw 1. And the minus 9 ultimate can also be fun letting us search our library for any permanent to put on the battlefield each turn. We've got Reverse Engineer with Improvise, letting us draw three, so if we can tap three artifacts it only costs double blue. And then Shrewd Negotiation, say that four times fast, lets us exchange control of target artifact we control and target artifact or creature we don't control, so we can get rid of one of our random two mana artifacts like Guild Globe and potentially steal a powerful creature from the opponent. Then at 6 mana we've got Shimmer Dragon, a 5-6 dragon with flying, and as long as we control 4 or more artifacts, the dragon has hexproof, and we can tap 2 untapped artifacts we control to draw a card, so very powerful card draw engine. We've got Zahid, Jin of the Lamp, which we can cast for 3 and a blue if we tap an untapped artifact we control, rather than pay the 6 mana, and then we get a 5-6 legendary flyer. Tesseret, Master of the Bridge, completes her Tesseret Trifecta, a 5 loyalty planeswalker, saying creatures and planeswalkers we cast have affinity for artifacts, so they cost 1 generic mana less to cast for each artifact we control. The plus 2 deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of artifacts we control, we also gain X life. The minus 3 returns an artifact from our graveyard to our hand, and the minus 8 lets us exile the top 10 cards from our library and put all artifacts from among them onto the battlefield. We've got Ugin the Ineffable, making colorless spells we cast cost 2 generic mana less to cast, so great for our artifacts. The plus 1 generates a 2 2 spirit token, potentially turning into an extra card if it gets dealt with, and can minus 3 to destroy target permanent, that's 1 or more colors. And then Herald of Anguish at 7 mana, a 5 5 demon with improvise and flying, so it can potentially be cast for double black if we tap 5 artifacts. And at the beginning of our end step, each opponent discards a card, so that's immediate value if the opponent can kill it at instant speed. And for one on a black, we can sacrifice an artifact to give a creature minus two, minus two until end of turn. Then going over the mana base, we've got Snow Covered Lands to combo with our Icebind Pillar. The reason we're playing Ipner Rivulets and our Ifner Deadlands is to combo with Forsaken Monument to provide additional mana. And then we've got a few blue-black dual lands and additional colorless lands to combo with Forsaken Monument and to provide a bit of utility. We've got Blast Zone, Blink Moth Nexus can turn into a creature, Buried Rune can get back one of our artifacts from our graveyard, Crawling Baron's powerful creature land, Faceless Haven to go with our snow lands, another creature land, Field of Ruin to deal with opposing lands. We've got Inventor's Fair, which can potentially tutor for one of our artifacts and gain one life if we control three or more artifacts at the beginning of our upkeep. And then we've got Spire of Industry as another multicolor land that also makes colorless mana for Monument. And finally, Zalfron Void to scry one. So, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, we're on the draw up against the Nickel Bolas Dragon Guard. This hand feels a little slow, not a lot of ramp. Stick or free Mulligan, this is better. So Mindstone still needs black mana to cast Tesserets. But uh, if we can cast the Tesseret and take an extra turn along the way, we can quickly reach for ultimates. There we go. Metallic Rebuke, also good interaction. Can maybe keep that up. The turn before they play Nicol Bolas. For now, relatively slow start from our opponents. Could see removal of Mind Stone, maybe in a Braid or Angrath's Rampage. Thought Erasure instead. Alright. Not sure what they should take with Thought Erasure. We've got some powerful threats, but they might want to take my interaction so they can resolve their own Planeswalker. Opponent takes Paradox Engine, and here an Archive the draw. So if we tap out for Tezzeret, we can make an Ethereum Cell maybe next turn Time Warp if all goes well, although we could expect removal on Tezzeret, and I won't have Rebuke available. But if I want to keep up Rebuke, I won't be able to do much else this turn. So, could also play Hedron Archive, and then next turn have enough mana for Tezzeret and Rebuke. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable too. And our opponent can't cast their Nicol Bolas yet, unless they've got a Dark Ritual, I suppose. So maybe they've got their own counter spells handy. So if I tap out for Tesseret, they could counter it, and I can't rebuke back since we don't have enough colored mana. So, can play Antiquities and still have Rebuke for next turn, although since they're putting Mr. Landrop we don't have to fear a uh, Nicol Bolas coming down. But I can also counter the counter spell to resolve Antiquities, which seems fine. Since that's most likely going to be a 2 for 1. And lets me use my mana efficiently. Alright. Map versus, I think, Vessel. Let's take the Vessel. Can't go wrong with more mana. Even though the cheaper artifact is maybe better if we're planning to attack for lethal with antiquities. Solve the equation to find an instant or sorcery. Didn't think the opponent's playing Shatterstorm, which would be one of the better cards they can get. Gets an extinction event, that's acceptable. Ooh, Mox Amber. That's great. So we can Tesseret, make an Ethereum Cell and Time Warp. Make an Ethereum Cell. More power for me. Play Vessel. Do I want to play the Prism? Nah, we'll just sit for 15. So next turn they could play Nicol Bolas. Kill my Tesseret before I ultimate. But we can easily finish off Tesseret with our Blink Moth. It's gonna be Bedevil on Tesseret instead. Although we've got plenty of mana to replay Tesseret now. I'm 
Maybe play the prism first. That's where its touch isn't bad. Keep that one on top. And then I could activate Blink Moth and attack. And then we have the Tesseract's touch in case the opponent has a fatal push here. To finish off Nicol Bolas. Okay. Extinction event, I guess, would be an answer to us turning some of our creatures into 5-5s. Five but overall not too threatening. Can also think about Buried Rune getting back an artifact, although not in a hurry to get Paradox Engine. A Rampage to sacrifice a Planeswalker. Okay. So step one, maybe draw with Witching Well. Ooh, more goodies. Tazaret's Artifice Master can draw two cards right away. I have I know what must be done. Okay. And then you could play Padim. And then wait on the Tazaret's touch for a turn. Opponent's still stuck on 4 mana, while we're double spelling, triple spelling. It's gonna make it difficult to come back for them. Falls to 6 to play Shatter Skull untapped, so they could play Nicol Bolas here. But now they should be dead to Tesseract's touch, plus Blink Moth, no matter what they kill. Takes out our Planeswalker. For your cause. And draw an extra card with Padim. And what do we want to touch here? Let's finish them off with a nice Firemind Vessel. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Up against Turgrid, the God of Frights. Can use map to find a land if needed. For now, we'll play Signet into Spellbomb. We'll have to be a little careful once Turgrid's in play not to sacrifice any artifacts. Turn to Mindstone. Let's draw. And then we can just play a Tesseract without sacking the map for now. Getting closer to playing the dragon with Hexproof. It's gonna be Inscription to make me discard two. I think I keep the dragon, although it's tempting to keep Citadel, it's just triple blank, gonna be a little difficult to cast. So next turn, could sack the map, get a swamp and use Tezzeret to cast Citadel, maybe that's better than dragon. Especially in a Turgrid deck, they might have some edict effects to make me sacrifice it, even if it has hexproof. So I'll keep Citadel. Could have also used map in response to get a swamp and then discard it. But I think this will work out. So make an Ethereum cell. Play Citadel. Make this for black, this for black. And that way I only have to sacrifice one Ethereum cell. Gear Hulk would be fine to keep for Turgrid. 
So maybe I don't cast it here. And just pass. Ah, Dread Presence I also don't mind taking out. They can deal to... To Tesseract, they decide to draw instead. Counter spell on top of our deck. Not bad. Could also ultimate Tesseract if I want, but I'm happy enough making more Ethereum cells first. Opponent's got their own Gear Hulk. Yeah, let's counter it. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against the Raal Storm Conduit. And our hands, not bad. Turn to Weaponsmith. Can ramp us nicely, play this Prophetic Prism. And then Thirst for Knowledge can refresh our hand. Opponent's got Brawl, which I might want to take out with Heartless Act before it uh, does too much damage. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Opponent passes, so they've got an answer for Tesseract in the form of a counterspell, potentially. So, kind of like uh, going for an end of turn Thirst, and then probably just play Terrarion and attack with the Weaponsmith. Could have also kept Terrarion in hand to discard to the Thirst, so we're guaranteed to discard an artifact. Opponent had a Saloon Division. That's fine. If we find one extra snow land, we can also attack with Faceless Haven as a way to maybe pressure Rawl. Opponent taps out for him. So finding a snow land would be good. Alright, there's a snow land, can discard golden egg perhaps. Although I guess Rawl is at 6. So one short of killing it with the Faceless Haven. So instead... I could Time Warp, play Signets. Does that help, or just Time Warp attack for one? Would be better to time warp once we have Tazerad in play, to be fair. And I'm a little bit short of doing that. Yeah, I think I still time warp here. And then I have to attack for one. And then now we can finish off Rawl. And still play Signets. I'll be back. Just you wait. So I didn't get to resolve Tesseret. But at least your opponent doesn't have an active planeswalker. Opponent taps out for double vision. I get to resolve Tesseret. And then Maybe use Weaponsmith to sacrifice Terrarion. Ooh, Karn's good. So we can play both Planeswalkers. 
starting with Karn. Kind of like making the creature here, even though it can die to double flame sweep. Just to put some pressure on the board. And then Tazrat seems better than attacking with Faceless Haven. So they could wait to flame sweep in my turn, but now that they're playing Electromancer, they're probably taking a slightly different approach. So they could have a response here. Before my token gets large enough to survive double flame sweep. It does not. Alright, let's push Electromancer. That works. Well, now I'm tempted to make another token. Do I want to tank with Haven? Would die to double flame sweep. So probably not. Opponent goes for it anyway, just to kill the weaponsmith. Okay, we've got a Tesseract about to ultimates. An active Karn to provide more cards. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got the turn 2 Dark Ritual into Tesseract up against the Chulain deck. Yeah, this is a keep. Could even consider turn 2 Ritual into. Hadron Archive, which will give me kind of a permanent mana boost for Citadel as well. Yeah, that seems even better. And then I can also play the Amulets with the Hadron Archive mana. And sacrifice it to get another black source for Citadel. Alright, not a bad turn too. Next turn I can either Tesseract or Karn. Um, let's go with Tesseract and then plus. Panharmonicon, also quite powerful. So... I can play the Citadel by sacrificing my Ethereum Cell and keep my land drop as an extra play off the top of my deck. Surveyor finds a land, sadly cannot play Emery unless I decline to shuffle, which I guess I can. Mill that island. Draw the lands, play an Ugin, which lets me play Mindstone for free too. Play land for the turn. Tesseract's Gambit to proliferate, so I could even ultimate my Tesseract here. Sure, why not? Play a free Mindstone. Play a 2 mana Karn thanks to the Ugin discount. Yeah, this is pretty gross. Okay, and then I can still plus Ugin. Land on top. So do I want to ultimate Tesseract or kill the Druid? Probably kill the Druid. Although, turn 4 Tesseract ultimate would have been impressive. We're at 7 life, but pretty far ahead on board I would say. Opponent does draw two of the Wall of Blossoms. Play a land for the turn. Time warp. Yeah, that should seal the deal. Go to two, but... 
with all these planeswalkers in play, that's a lot of extra value. You can go to one with Terrarion. Probably don't want to cast a Fatal Push. So... We'll plus. Plus again. Could also minus to start beating down. But I want more cards. Arrow of Anguish. Okay. Play a Vessel. Can Emery get anything back yet? Can get the Amulets. So I guess that's another Shuffle effect too. Played for free thanks to Ugin. Get a land. Heartless Act on top. Could draw with the Mind Stone if we want. And plus. More power for me. And let's Tesseret's touch. Prophetic Prism maybe. And attack with the team. Can use Inventor's Fair to search up whatever we want. Ephemerate on the wall. Pretty strong. Opponent draws two again. Now we can activate Citadel as well at any point. So we only need to deal 12 more damage. So, yeah, opponent has seen enough. What would our turn of look like here? Yeah, could have used Karn to get access to Herald of Anguish to decimate the opponent's board. Could have uh, drawn a few extra cards, used Inventor's Fair to maybe get like a Paradox Engine or Monument to start gaining a bit of life back. So we had a few options, but... Yeah, can't really go wrong with an early dark ritual in this deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Up against the God of Winter snow deck. We even have a nice enabler for revolt for fatal push with the chromatic sphere. Priest we don't care about too much at the moment. Yeah, I'll pass the next turn. Cast the Thirsts. And Devourer of Memory. So opponent might be planning to use the Rhyme Staff more than God of Winter. Could kill the Devourer now. Sure, it's not a Snow Permanent, so they can get it back with the Rhyme Staff. One's gonna village rights in response to draw two. And we'll pass with thirsts available. Discard two lanes. Tesseret seems good. And then next turn we have a few options. Narfi pumps priest. Can hit for one. Bad idea. So your point only has three snow lands for the priest, so they shouldn't be able to easily take out Zahid at least. But I think I prefer Monuments as the play. And then could take out Narfi, 
Although they can pretty easily get it back. Still seems worthwhile. And War of Invention can maybe look for Bolas Citadel. Lock Mirror Serpent's main phase to play around any counter spells. So how much mana do I have here? Second place Signets. Gain some life. Or for six. Get Citadel. Doomblade on top, which doesn't have any targets at the moment. A valuable addition. Serpent takes out Tesseret. Try it for ramp. And a great hench, pretty strong. So I could take out the dried here. Opponent can play God of Winter and draw a card if they want. Decides not to. Treasure Mam, good combo with Citadel as well. Scry that to the bottom. Ooh, Mystic Forge. So now I can play my artifacts for mana instead of life if I desire. Reverse Engineer. It's going to be a little pricey in terms of life, but seems pretty strong. A relic can pay for one life and gain two life back. And then Prism will get rid of that land. Okay, what's next? Can activate Mystic Forge, get rid of Ether Hub. Play a Mind Stone using. I guess uh, life is fine. Next, maybe use Relic, Cycle, get rid of Narfi as well. Steel Heart will play. And time for Weaponsmith. And then I can still use my Pillar to tap down the Serpents. Don't know if I should keep the Mox Amber in hand or not. I can cast it, I suppose. Can I still play Zahid if I sacrifice the Ethereum cells? I guess it also enables Mox Amber. Is that worth it? I wouldn't be able to keep up Pillared if I do. Now let's just pass. Could have also tapped the Great Henge since this taps artifacts. Just want to keep my life total nice and high so we can keep leveraging Citadel. If they can take out Weaponsmith, don't really mind. Get to untap. Herald of Anguish. Probably worth the life here. 
and a Paradox Engine. Now we're really comboing off. So I want to float my Artifact Mana. Wish I could just double Q instead, but I might need my lands untapped. Cast Paradox Engine. Four mana, I think. Yeah, and our opponent has seen enough. The Paradox Engine plus Mystic Forge plus Citadel is just a little bit too much to handle. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Muxus deck. So we're gonna need our interaction, Doom Blades, definitely useful. And yeah, Guardian Idol for a bit of ramp. Seems worth it. Now ideally counter spells would be better than removal spells against Muxus. But hopefully they just don't hit too many scary goblins. Turn 3 Tesseret on the play is never bad. Wily Goblin will ramp the opponent somewhat. And next turn I could play a Whirler Rogue to make some more Thopters. Heraldic Banner. Pumps the Wily Goblin. Yeah, Rogue should stun the bleeding nicely. Opponent can already play Muxus. Although I can keep up Doomblade in case something bad happens and we can kill a haste granting goblin. Signets. That resolves. It is tempting to play another Tesseret here. Yeah, I guess we'll still have Doomblade available just in case. And then I'll happily pay one life to keep my Ethereum cells in play. Can draw two. You are still one step behind. Right, we'll pass. And yeah, gotta hope this Muxus doesn't hit too many goblins. Bone goes for Snoop first. Gate to the afterlife on top. That's not a goblin. So they're also playing Godfather's Gift Cavalcade now. Sure. Doesn't trigger with the banner pumping their goblins. So I guess her opponent didn't have a land for Muxus. And they aren't drawing one either. Alright, so what's next? Draw with Tesserets. Cold logic will always win. And then we can play Whirler Rogue. Plus maybe Map or Cold Steel Hearts, develop our mana some more. Uh, plus our Tesserets could also kill the Snoop, which is not a bad value play. <laughs> this is just the beginning. Don't want them triggering the gate, since that can draw towards the missing land. So we were spared an early Muxus, despite some early ramp cards. Buck catchers acceptable. I'm fine with the trade. Even though it triggers a gate. So we want to start digging towards some of our finishers. Maybe try and put Bolas of Citadel in play. So 
Zero point still pretty far from transforming gate. Fatal push, not bad. Can scry. Time warp seems excellent. With two active planeswalkers. Play prism. Time warp targeting myself. Excellent. And I can attack. And our opponent concedes. All right, so we got to see our Tesseret Brawl deck in action, and Blue Black sure has some powerful mystical archives to play with. Dark Ritual comes to mind. Definitely won us a few games. Time Warp has been great, and then uh, Bolas the Citadel, not a mystical archive, but very powerful in this deck, especially got a ton of ways to manipulate the top of our deck and ways to tutor it up. Can potentially consider playing Aetherflux Reservoir as a great card to combo with Bolas the Citadel specifically, so we can offset the life loss and potentially combo off in one big turn. So that's definitely a card you could add. But for now, wanna thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.